Sorry, I'm a little late. I had a call from a firm that we work with and had to get a couple of things taken care of quickly, but that's out of the way. OK, uh, if it weren't for June the 30th uh, looming right around the corner, I would get more exciting, excited about what may have happened up here uh, today at 1960. Uh, we've had a double test of the high uh, from the other day. Not, I mean, it's a little bit too close together uh, to get super excited about it, but we may have we had a retest failure, and the market is selling pretty good right now. Uh, we're off about 20 points from the high. So we're back to where we were. We've got really, really good support in this 35, 37 area. In the 19 to 20 area, we've got a very low volume number at 14 and a half, and then we have this 1901 to 1903. So this market can still trade higher even with a visit or run back to 1900. Don't think we're going to get there. I still am of the mind to buy it in this 35, 37 area, and obviously can sell failure uh, to take out this high. Our number one sell point today was uh, 55, 54. The market did not set up there. Our number two sell point was 59 to 61, and it set up nicely. Uh, for a good short. It took patience. It took an hour and a half for it to roll. Uh, but we know how to play that. And uh, we know that when we make new highs or the market's had a 10-point run, sometimes it takes a couple of hours for it to roll over. Hour and a half is the magic number where we start looking for that rollover. So, um, Retesting this high and that holding uh, should not surprise anybody. Uh, we've got a potential new move here out of the middle uh, in this 50-52 area. Uh, and we're, we've got a shot at our 35 to 37. So I don't see that anything has changed in the news. I'll go back and take a look at it. But uh, right now we're at 41.25. So to give it a little bit of room, 35-37 would be buy one. And then we have this uh, 30 area way back here at 30. So uh, 30, 32 would be by 2. I'm guessing 35 is the low. And on, then on the sell side, um, got 45, 47 for the overnight. It'll be S1. And then our 49 to 51 for S2. So uh, as usual, our number two points rule. And uh, the reason or the dynamic behind that is that it allows the locals to get stops outside the obvious, take out near support, near resistance. And they did. So um, took until E period before we got into our cell ban. But uh, when you broke support at 57 right here, uh, pretty nice trade. So that's it for the E-mini. I uh, we'll want to sell into the first rally. Um, see resistance at 45 to 50. Uh, and uh, then I want to see if we can get down and uh, be able to scoop some up at um, 35, 37s, where I'm fairly comfortable being a buyer at that level. And uh, again, the. Um, the idea behind uh, why are we buyers, why are we still pursuing the buy side, uh, is because of um, second quarter um, end of the month, second quarter uh, numbers, and money managers are compensated off of that fairly handsomely. Bonus time. OK, looking at um, the note, uh, we may have a move out of the middle if the E-mini starts to sell with uh, some real strength. I, uh, we've got ourselves a move out of the middle. Uh, we're up. Uh, this morning, we wanted to sell 17s to uh, um, 21s. The high was 18, followed by a high at 20. Uh, we had hoped to buy the uh, 8 to 12 area. The low was 9. 
Uh, so we caught both ends of this market really, really well, and we have a potential mom or move out of the middle right here. And if the E-mini continues to tank, uh, I imagine we'll see the note higher. Uh, we also uh, are of the thinking that uh, we're going to look at three up auctions, not up, down, up. Now, they can't take the market straight up during auctions without an obvious piece of news. And the obvious piece of news could be uh, heavy selling in the E-mini. Um, so I'm not saying it can't develop. It's just doubtful, given the time of the month. So this morning, we were going to be sellers at 17 to 21. Tonight, we're going to sell failure to take out 20 to 24. If the E-mini is cratering, we really don't want to be short. Uh, on the buy side, last rotate down was 15 and a half. We're at 18 right now, so we'll make buy 113 to 17 on the idea that we're going to have three up auctions. And then um, we'll make it 5 to 9. Real comfortable in the 5 to 9 area. Would like to get the buying done closer to 13, obviously, than 17. But a lot of it's going to be dependent upon how much selling we get in the E-mini this afternoon. And then our number two sell point will be 27 to 31. So we've had a, we had a, a really, really good day. We had our number two sell point in the E-mini, and uh, we got our number one buy and sell points in the note. And uh, that's the way we like it. OK, on the ZB, started out this morning in the ZB. Uh, we were buyers at uh, 12 to 16. Uh, the low looks to be 15. And we were sellers. Uh, 23 to 27, and the first high was uh, 28 to 30. So the uh, outer, the inner edge of the buy worked, and the outer edge of the sell worked. Again, not perfect, but not too bad for being away from the market for several days. And being able to step right in and do this. And the, the, again, the reason I'm able to step right in and do this is because of uh, market profile knowledge. OK, uh, the high is 6. So selling failure to take out 4 to 8 is a pretty easy trade to see. And then 11 to 15. I, I don't think we can break this market out unless the E-mini just craters. And on the buy side, the low is 24. We're at 01. And the last rotate down in K is at 27. So this very, very aggressive 25 to 29 is buy one. We'd like to get it done against 20 to 24. And then 21 to 17 will be buy two. So uh, if you work diligently at the um, Uh, understanding the profile and structure, you'll be able to do uh, just what I do, given a little bit of time. I've trained people privately and had them pick it up uh, in the room. And privately, uh, in a couple of weeks, they can make the same calls that I do. Um, takes a little bit longer in the main room. But every day, we look at the market in the same way. So it, the, the information I teach privately is within your hands, too, right within your grasp, if you'll apply the principles and work. OK, uh, gold this morning. We missed the sell by a little bit. It only made it up to 24. We were hoping to sell 25s to 27s. Um, we did get a winner off our first buy, not for much. Um, and um, our number two buy zone, 15 to 17, just touched the top of that. So uh, we had uh, 
gold if we hadn't taken our setups. If we were wait, waiting for our levels, we would have been left at the station on the sell side. On the buy side, we had a couple of op buying opportunities at our prices. So uh, here we are. We know that we got a seller at uh, we rejected prices above 23 uh, to a high of maybe 27. So selling failure to take out uh, 23.25 for the overnight. I, I'm not real. I don't mind getting short during the day in this contract, but I really don't want to be uh, short overnight. I mean, there's just too damn much stuff that could go wrong these days. On the buy side, buying against this high volume number, so we'll make 15 to 17 buy one once again. And we have a very, very, very round profile here on volume wise. That's a D. That's about as close to a D as you can get. Uh, so if we get a move that comes out of this 20 area, we don't want to fade it. But if we open soft tonight and weak, um, we can um, get long in the 15 to 17 area. And then we got really, really good support down here at 7 to 10. We'll make that buy, too. But uh, gold, uh, we have had more accurate level calls in gold before. But it's a very, very volatile contract. And uh, if we can get close to our areas, it's a good one to take. Yeah, Rohit, that, uh, that website that I gave you uh, since 2009 has consistently shown higher um, inflation than CPI. And it just kind of keeps things in perspective. Uh, they, um, they, they measure daily uh, the prices of it. They set a, a billion price points. I, I don't know if they do that. but. Uh, that's what that's what they advertise. It's a pretty good, a pretty accurate measure on uh, inflation. It's real data as opposed to statistical smoothing, if you know what I mean. And we like raw data, real time, better than statistically smoothed stuff. Well, they've eliminated food, fuel, and uh, one other category, and I forget what that was. So, yeah, unless you eat, oh, heating your house, and rest of it, unless you eat, drive, and heat or cool your house, uh, the, the inflation is lower than that. Okay, uh, big picture stuff right here. There's a seller. At 107, there's a buyer at 105.50, and then we're at 105.97, and we've got this saddle formation. So I, I, my guess is is that uh, we'll lower it a little bit, but we'll try to 50s to 75s for buy one, and then 105 even, 105 and a quarter for buy two. Uh, on the uh, sell side, uh, we'll make it 106.25 to 50. I'm, that's that's a very bold trade. Would like to definitely get that one done higher. Uh, then the trade I do like is selling 75s to 107s. Now, I don't know. Uh, it, it, pretty interesting. One of the reports that came out today was that if we send troops to Baghdad, that both sides would have to get involved in the negotiations. And hey, what are you doing? Negotiating away Iraq for those people? Um, I can just see you getting ISIS to uh, sit down and negotiate anything less favorable to them. Um, the reports coming out of Iraq uh, do show that previous Sunni leaders west of Baghdad have joined the movement. And what these units do is is that, let's say, if they were to prevail and win, then the Sunnis would turn on the ISIS guys who uh, apparently 
are from Syria for the most part, and they don't want to be ruled by a bunch of Syrians, if you know what I mean. And then the bloodletting between them would begin. So it's um, one thing for sure, there's going to be people shooting each other for a long time in Iraq. Um, And last but not least, the euro. Uh, we are in a trading range, going nowhere fast. Uh, the sell against 3650 is the preferred trade. Buying below 136 is OK. It uh, carries a little more risk. Uh, we know there's sellers above 136.30. And we had pretty good buying below 135.50, as you can see, off the structure. So that's where your buyers have been, and this is where your sellers have been. So uh, once again, uh, right now we're at 36.05. Last row stayed up, stopped at uh, 23, so we'll make 20 to 30, sell 1. Sell 2, 40 to 50. On the buy side, let's make it uh, 80 to 90, pick up, uh, that's where our uh, support is right now. We'll play for that. And then if we break the 75 area, we'll go back to 50 plus or minus 5. And that's all I've got for June the 24th, 2014. We had a good day trading today. Uh, fortunately, uh, uh, my stuff worked uh, when we came in. And um, we'll pick it up tomorrow. You all have a great evening. Thank you, Nancy. I'm going to go shut down the recording right now.